Newton for I Carefully, Merle Travis, Moe Zerger, and Kennedy Jones. We would like to thank each one of you coming out, and we would like to thank the people, citizens, that made this possible, and we would like to thank the donors of the food, and the police, city police, the state police, and uh, other law enforcement officers we have, the ambulance service, the Joyceburg Fire Department, the Nelson Creek Fire Department, and the Dunmore Fire Department. This is a great day we have here, and God bless y'all. Have a great time, and at this time I'll turn it over to Dr. Larry Kilgore, will be an answer for the program. Have a great day. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm glad we had uh, a little better weather today than we did last year. It was very hot when we dedicated the Merle Travis uh, Highway. Um, we are very pleased that everybody's here today, and it's indeed an honor for me to be asked to uh, serve as MC for this wonderful dedication. Uh, we owe a lot of thanks today, and we'll try and get those in in a few minutes, but we are very uh, especially honored to be a part of the dedication of the Mose Reger Park, uh, the Mose Reger Monument, and the fountain dedicated to the uh, uh, legends of guitar who had their home uh, upbringing here in Drakesboro. Initially, I'd like to recognize uh, the family members uh, that are represented here today for the for uh, guitar players. Uh, we have lots of recognition today, so bear with me. Uh, it's very important that we honor those uh, family members and those people that are in, in attendance today. Uh, to my left, uh, representing uh, the Moe's Reger family, of course, uh, his wife, Laverta, seated to my left. Uh, also in attendance today are uh, Moe's Reger's son. Yeah, let's hear it for Laverta. Thank you, Laverta. Mose uh, has a son and two daughters, Freddie, Nita, and Marilyn, and they're also in attendance today. Let's have a round of applause for that family. Also seated uh, to my left, uh, members uh, representing the family of Kennedy Jones. Uh, in attendance today are uh, Kennedy Jones' son, uh, Kennedy, and his wife, Lil. Please stand. Kennedy Jones' uh, daughter, Lee. <laughs> Betty Jones, who is the wife of the late uh, Don Kennedy. Don Jones, I'm sorry. And we're happy to have them here today. Representing the Merle Travis family, also seated on the trailer today, are uh, Merle Travis's sister, Veda. Veda, could you stand? Yeah. And uh, Merle Travis's brother, uh, John M. John? We're also happy to have a couple of Merle's uh, children today, and uh, I'm happy to see them again. Uh, seated to my right is uh, Pat Travis Etherly. That's Patty. And I'm trying to hide the fellow behind me, but uh, everybody knows Tom Bresh, Merle's son. Seated to my right, representing the family of Ike Everly, are two of Ike's sisters, Hattie Hall and Laureen Moore. Ladies, would you stand? And of course, we especially want to thank uh, and recognize Don and Phil Everly and all of the activities that the Everly Brothers Foundation have uh, done for this area and will continue to do. Uh, we're most appreciative of Don and Phil Everly, and let's have a round of applause for them. We're going to continue with our recognitions for just a few more minutes, if you'll bear with me. The program today is going to include uh, very special words uh, today from uh, historians that uh, uh, I'll note uh, have, uh, uh, will, or will speak to us today uh, regarding the history of each of these legendary guitar players. Uh, we have representatives from the Country Music Foundation, and uh, it wouldn't be proper to have a dedication of uh, 
a monument uh, such as this without music and we're going to have some special music as well and then we'll follow that with a brief dedication ceremony when Ms. Laverta Rigger will unveil a monument to Mose. We have some uh, special uh, people in attendance today and I'm just going to recognize them and let's hold our applause to the end. Uh, and if I have uh, omitted uh, someone of note, uh, please accept my apologies. We're happy that everyone's here today. We are very excited today that Grandpa Jones is here and his wife Ramona. Yeah, let's have a round for Grandpa. Also in attendance today is uh, uh, Rose Lee Mathis. Rose Lee is here. Here's Rose Lee. I saw uh, the Rich Brothers, Spider and Dave and Raymond earlier. I hope they're here. If not, let's have a round of applause for them. A number of people have, uh, are important as regards to this type of music, uh, including uh, people like Dave Stewart uh, from Corinth, Mississippi, who heads up the Cannonball Rag, a newsletter that uh, uh, dedicates its pages to uh, memories of Merle and Mose and Ike and Kennedy and uh, this music. We're happy that Dave is here today. Also in attendance, uh, Paul Yandel from Nashville, uh, noted guitar player uh, for many years and friend of many here. Uh, earlier I saw Paul Camplin, uh, who's provided me with a number of articles and pictures over the years. I'm happy to see him again today. And of course, Lightning Chance, who served as Master of Ceremonies this morning for our wonderful uh, Home of the Legends Thumb Picking Contest. Let's have a round of applause for all these people. <laughs> Joanna would be uh, mad at me if I didn't make uh, note of the fact that we have uh, t-shirts, refreshments, and especially, you might be interested, there are certificates that are available, very nice. Uh, that you can attest that you were here in attendance the day this monument was dedicated. You might check on those across the way later. The Bicentennial Commission of the State of Kentucky uh, provided uh, uh, a large amount of money uh, that uh, was put to use to build this uh, monument and fountain, and we're certainly uh, most thankful that they are here. We are hoping that someone from the Bicentennial Commission is here today, but I've not seen them yet. Okay, let's get on with the program. Enough of my words. Um, our first uh, speaker today, uh, we are very excited to have here, seeing us again today. And uh, I first met Bill Lightfoot four years ago in Arkansas at the Merle Travis Weekend. Uh, Bill is a English professor, an English professor at Appalachian State, and has done a, a great deal of work and spent many, many hours researching this music. And today he's going to educate us about our our roots as far as uh, this uh, legendary music goes. Uh, let me introduce Bill Lightfoot. Thank you, Larry. Um, I grew up in Madisonville, not too far from here, and yesterday I was driving in through White Plains and we passed the school, and I was reminded of a little band I was in back in 1957. I played the drums in a band called Eddie Gaines and the Rockin' Five. We played a sock hop down there, and a couple years ago, uh, some people from Holland made a record of rockabilly music called it Classic Rockabilly and uh, they put our song on there. It was called Bebop Battle and Ball. It, uh, in fact, it was done right down here in Central City. Uh, they put the musicians on there and then said, these musicians, Bill Lightfoot, the drummer, is lost in obscurity, which uh, made me feel kind of bad. But uh, I want to tell you, I may be a little bit obscure, but I'm not as obscure as I'm supposed to be. And it's a pleasure to be here to talk about these guys. John Rumble from the Country Music Foundation is going to talk about the legendary aspects of, of this. But I want to talk a little bit about the community. A few, few weeks ago, Bill Paxton sent me a list of the activities today, and I noticed it said, Home of the Legends. And legend is a word that's not used loosely. I agree totally that these men were legends and should be legends. But I started thinking about the word home. In fact, I looked it up and it said uh, uh, one of the definitions was the place where something is or has been originated and developed. And that's right here, folks. This, this music uh, didn't originate in a vacuum. And it, it, and it, it had a home and I think the home itself is legendary and should be honored. Last year when they had a rededication, Phil Everly said uh, 
everybody that's from this area sat on the porch one night and played and sung with somebody and, and how true that is. On the same day, Pat Italy said that uh, when Travis was here in 1956 at the dedication of the monument, he said, I didn't write 16 times. He said, you people wrote it. Some of you lived it. Uh, and it's, it's true that uh, you people had a hand in creating and originating. You were the home of Travis Pickens and, and all the music associated with it. And if I and uh, Kennedy were here today, they'd be the first people to tell you about what they picked up from Arnold Schultz and from Leonard and Charlie and Hattie Everly who, who played music. Mose would tell you about his brothers, J.R. and Lyman and his sisters. Laverta said uh, that Bonnie and Queen played too. And people you all know, Levi Foster and Jody Burton and Amos Johnson and Mutt Smith and Jim Mason. Merle would tell you about his brother Melvin and Taylor and Taylor's wife May who was a finger picker and played great and Uncle Merritt Edison and Cola and all the guys that played with these fellas that you knew, B.W. Johnson and Plucker English and Howard Evitz and Pip Stevens and Robin Cundiff Durham and Orville Raymer and Robbie Hogan and all those guys. And then the, the people who lived around here that formed the second generation of pickers, Tommy Flint and Bob Barber and Odell Martin and Steve Carson and Spider Rich and Hal Riley and Royce Morgan and Dickie Shelton and his brothers and Paul Mosley and Eddie Pennington. All the guys on today's program, I'll be here until next week if I listed all the people who helped spread thumb picking, but my point is that this community should be honored too. All the pickers and, and the wives and the children and the neighbors and the business people and those in the radio and newspaper industries and the farmers and coal miners and all the people that made this possible today, Joanna. All you folks provided a home that nurtured and sustained this music that made it happen and I think that uh, you people are legends too. And I think you ought to give yourselves a big, big round of applause. Thank you very much. Man, I think we had a request that uh, people over on this side couldn't hear it very well. Is that true? We need the adjustments in the sound. Nobody's raising their hands, so it sounds like we're okay. Uh, I'm not sure we can get sound over to the side. Uh, okay, uh, our next guest today uh, is a representative from Nashville and the Country Music Foundation, and please make welcome Mr. John Rumble. Thank you, thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the city of Drakesboro and the Kentucky Bicentennial Commission for inviting me to join today's ceremony as a representative of the Country Music Foundation. And as many of you may know, we operate the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville and its related library and educational and publications programs through which we seek to document the achievements of uh, men like those we honor today uh, by our collections of photos and articles and books and newspaper clippings and interviews and costumes and instruments that we display. I'm especially proud to participate because I'm a Kentucky native myself. Although I wasn't lucky enough to be born in Muhlenberg County, I was born and raised in Louisville and it's good to be back in the bluegrass state. I'm also proud because you are doing today what we at the Country Music Foundation strive to do through our museum and library, that is to honor country music's past while recognizing the influence of the past on the present. Because today we're here not only to honor Mose Rager and Kennedy Jones and Ike Everly and Merle Travis, but to remind ourselves that the music they shaped is still living and growing. And so this monument is not simply a monument to an individual or a group, but to a living tradition, a tradition carried on over many decades by musicians like Chet Atkins and Odell Martin and Scotty Moore and Doc Watson and Jackie Phelps, Tom Bresh and Lenny Bro, Tommy Flint, Paul Yandel, Jerry Reed, Joe Edwards, Joe Mathis, Spider Rich, and others too numerous to mention. But as Bill Lightfoot has said, Mose Rager, Kennedy Jones, Ike Everly, and Merle Travis were the generals in this army of pickers, the men who gave the others 
their marching orders. This quartet of Kentuckians can also be considered ambassadors who took finger-style guitar picking from rural and small-town America to the nation's cities from a localized setting here in western Kentucky to the nation and to the world. They also took their music from a folk environment in which music was passed along from person to person to the mass media of radio and recording. And what's more, they proved that in western Kentucky, music knew no racial boundaries. Black and white guitarists came, to develop, came together to develop the fingerstyle tradition, as Mose Rager and his peers often pointed out. The result was nothing short of a revolution in the way the guitar was played, much the same sort of change that Earl Scruggs later accomplished on the banjo. During the 1940s and 50s, the fingerstyle explosion helped to identify country music with the guitar. And I think it's safe to say that the influence of fingerstyle pickers in Nashville recording sessions eventually helped to give that city the nickname Guitar Town. Of course, the things that Rager, Jones, and Everly, and Travis accomplished were partly the result of their times. They came along just as radio and recording were coming into their own, making it possible to market country music on a national scale. But without the talent and the dedication of these pioneers who played simply for the joy of playing, the fingerstyle revolution would not have happened and we would be much the poorer for it. So I'd like to close by adapting a quotation from Winston Churchill and applying it to the men we're now honoring. And that is this, seldom in the history of country music was so much owed by so many to so few. Thank you. Very good. Thanks a lot to John and Bill for those words. Um, we're going to move into the music part of our, our program, and uh, we're trying to make our program as short and sweet as possible, realizing that everybody's standing in the sun. But uh, this type of event wouldn't be right without music. And we have selected from a number of people who could have played today uh, four performers that I think give uh, special meaning to the music uh, in this part of the country. Uh, our first performer is uh, Don Dean, who's written a tune especially uh, for Cleeton's Crossing and uh, in this area, and uh, he'll be coming up first. While we're getting set up for the music, I'd like to take a minute to especially thank Joanna Fox and the City Council who have put together this magnificent dedication, not only arranging for the building of these monuments, but putting together the program and getting the sound system and the flowers and the the roads and the setup and the parking and all the things that it takes to do this. Let's give a nice round of applause to Joanna Fox and the city council. Okay, a Western Kentucky boy, Don Dean, and we'll get him set up to play. This tune was written as a super story of what, what's going on around this part of the country, coal mines, and problems, the economy, and so forth. I'll try to do it, hope we'll do justice here. <laughs> Guitars ring. 
Now most folks never heard of Cleveland Crossing, but they could tell you where the blues was born. On Basin Street, New Orleans, Louisiana, this legend has it there the blues was born. But where did Travis Pickin come together? The thumb and choked up guitar style with love. It had its early roots on Cleveland Crossing with a little help from somewhere up above. Of more than three score years ago was saying. Now look here, there's quite a crowd on Cleveland Crossing. Must be a death or a human tragedy. But there's music on the air as we draw closer. There's Jonesy with a guitar on his knees. A teenage Moses smiling, he's in heaven. The mines are closed today, the work is done. They're on the passing time of Cleveland Crossing. They've no idea the style that they've begun. Where that thumb and finger style guitar was king. Say, I think I'll try my hand. They swapped their early legs on Cleveland Crossing. They've no idea their style was sweep the land. Yes, they let them old time get tires ring. Now you know that magic didn't stay on Cleveland Crossing. It hopped the freight and went to town to see. It rode the airways out from Cincinnati. You still can pick it up most any day. But where did Travis Pickin come together? That thumb and choked up guitar style with love. On Cleveland crossing down the old Kentucky. With a little help from somewhere up above. Return with me. This lady says she lives in Cleve. Uh, next on the program is a fellow who came a long way to be a part of this, and we certainly are happy to have him on the program. Uh, Al Bain and his wife Kathy are musicians that uh, are very entertaining and travel all over the Northeast uh, performing their music. Al is a notable Merle Travis fan and has a great voice. And he's going to do a song today that was written by a Kentuckian named Hal Riley and uh, is about Drakesboro. Ladies and gentlemen, give a nice hand for Al Bain. Thank you, Larry. We, about four years ago, the first time we went up to Mountain View, Arkansas, to the Travis Tribute, uh, we were fortunate enough to meet Hal Riley. And I fell in love with this song and knew it had to be, had to be carried on. So, I'd like to thank you for, for letting us to be a part of this. It's very important to us. Well, I was born in Drakesburg, Kentucky. Just a little coal mining town. My daddy worked in the black diamond coal mines. All day long for a dollar and a dime. There wasn't much to do up in Drakesburg. One pool room and a moving picture show We listened to the music of the guitars Played 
Them bite you boys, them Berlin boys Won't you play me some of style music The kind that Berlin and Moe's broke Play me some of style music It brightens up your spirit And it's good for your soul So I'm going to adjust the mics just a little bit. Thank you very much. The Drakesboro Paradise area has always meant a lot to my brothers and me and my mother and father. I've been coming down here just as a visitor since I was a child. And uh, thank you for uh, including me in part of your, this tribute here. I'm much too young to have a street named after me, man. This is a song I wrote for my dad uh, about 23 years ago. When I was a child, my family would travel down to western Kentucky where my parents were born. You know the backwards old town that's off the mountain so many times when my memories are warm. And Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County Down by the Green River where the paradise lay Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late and nasty Mr. Peabody's coal train has hauled it away Well, sometimes we travel right down the Green River To the abandoned old prison down by Adriel well, the air smell like snakes, and we'd shoot with our pistols. But empty pop bottles, it was all we would kill. And Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River, where paradise lay. Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late and nasty. Mr. Peabody's coal train just hauled it away. They tortured the timber and they stripped all the land. They dug for the coal till the land was forsaken. Then they wrote it all down as the progress of man. And Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River where paradise lay. Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late and nasty. Mr. Peabody's coal train has hauled it away. Now when I die, let my ashes flow down the Green River. I let my soul roll on up to the Rochester Dam. I'll be halfway to heaven with paradise waiting, just five miles away from wherever I am. And Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County? Down by the Green River, where paradise lay. Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late and nasty. Mr. Peabody's coal train is hauled it away. And Mr. Peabody's coal train is hauled it away. Thank you very much, and God bless you.
Man, it wouldn't be complete without that thing. That sends chills up and down my spine. <clears throat> All right, our uh, next uh, performer is someone that's uh, very familiar with, uh, I think, everybody here. If you missed him last night at the uh, jam session, you missed a real treat. But we're going to get a little more of it today. Uh, please make welcome the son of Merle Travis, Tom Brett. Here's a good one, buddy. Sun is out. Well, since this is a Mose Rigger monument going to be unveiled, I'm going to do a song that Trav wrote about Mose using one of those great Mose Rigger licks. November to go to France and play at the World Guitar Expo. I was invited by Chet Atkins and uh, Marcel Dadi. And when I got over there to play, the French people, uh, when I walked into this original banquet, everybody stood up when I walked in and I felt somewhat silly because I hadn't spent a lot of time in France. So I asked Marcel Dadi uh, why they stood up and he said, uh, there are three guitar players as far as the European countries are concerned that were masters. Andre Segovia was the master of classical guitar and anybody that plays classical guitar somewhere or another tries to play uh, Andre Segovia sort of a lick or style. With jazz it was Django Reinhardt, a native Frenchman. And when it comes to finger style playing they said uh, Merle Travis was the originator and the master of finger picking. And anybody else was uh, a derivative of Merle Travis and that finger picking thing and he says you're the bloodline and they respect that so I wrote a song for him over there a song called the sidewalks of Bordeaux and I'm gonna play it for you right now it's from the movie sidewalks of Bordeaux that starred Garth Brooks and uh, Paula Abdul <laughs> I'm just making that up huh? <laughs> Thank you. 
Smithsonian Institution. See if you remember this. This is the one that you wrote. Well, some people say man made out of mud. Poor man's made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood, skin and bones. A mind that's weak and a back that's strong. Little 16 ton. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you tell me. I can't go, I owe my soul to the company store. Well, I was born one morning and sun didn't shine. Picked 
up my shovel and I walked down to the mine. Loaded 16 tons. Number nine coal and the straw boss said, Well, bless your soul, you load 16 tons. Now what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me? Cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. A lot of men didn't, a lot of men died. One fist of iron, the other steel. Now if the right one don't get you, well, the left one will. You load 16 tons, and what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. I got the word that Trav passed away. It was not a happy day in any of our lives, uh, in the family and uh, within the friends, Travis. I wrote a song, I'll do it for you right now. It's called Guitar in the Window. It's a fictional song. No history behind this, because I have historians behind me. I didn't want you to say, well, that doesn't make sense.
Well, I got one more thing to lay on you here. Oh, you put up one more and your sun pans over. Then you all change the other direction and get the other side cooked for a little bit. Well, some people go to school just to learn how to teach. Other people go to school to learn how to preach. But if you can't preach without going to school, you ain't no preacher, just an educated fool, and that's all. chills up and down my spine. Now, let's have another round of applause for all of our members. Yeah. I hope everybody's having fun. Yeah. I think it's about that time where we're ready to dedicate our park and monument and our fountain. Ms. Reger. Ms. Laverta. You ready to uh, unveil the monument? We're ready. You want to start making your way down to the monument? And the other family members that are here? While, uh, while Ms. Reger was, is making her way down to the monument, uh, one item I forgot to mention, and, and this is important. I don't know why I forgot it, because I got my thumb pick in my pocket. I know there's a lot of thumb pickers here, and a lot of guys have got their guitars and their amps and so forth. The rest of the afternoon, uh, we're going to use the stage and the sound system for those guys who want to come up here and play a tune in dedication uh, for this uh, day and park and monument and fountain. And uh, most of you guys aren't bashful, so I want those thumb picks ready and we'll get an order set up and get
get those who want to play a tune or two or more to come up and plug in while everybody's uh, looking at the monument, enjoying the fountain and getting something to eat and uh, looking at the souvenirs and so forth and so on. his name, it will live on in legend and song. Never ask any fame in his own humble way. He'll have his reward when the master will say, welcome, Mose Regger, your day's work is done. That was a quote by Arthur Smith. An era has ended, has come to a close in Western Kentucky with the passing of Mose, Dwight Linkhart. What a special day we've had. It's my, my distinct pleasure to dedicate the monument Mosrager Park and the Fountain to the Legends. Everybody have a lot of fun. Thank you.